have as my guest Miss Tony Nichols. Hi, Miss Nichols. Hi. And if I'm not re I'm forgetting, you're uh, with business development. Yes. Give us your correct title because I kind of missed that. <laughs> it's okay. Yes. Business development coordinator. Okay. Thank you, Miss Tony Nichols, who's business development coordinator, and she's going to help us through this and get some of the information. Uh, Ms. Nichols, what new changes have taken place since Prospect Medical uh, purchased the hospital last month? So there have been a number of new changes that have been extremely exciting at the hospital. Um, we have recommitted ourselves to providing the best possible care, and we've done this through introducing interdisciplinary rounds that's physician-led. It includes the entire team for uh, the care of the patient. That includes physical therapy, social work, um, of course, the, the any sort of medical team member that would be needed, and they go through every single floor and discuss every patient, what the patient's needs are, and how to best address those needs and develop a plan of care. Um, we have also committed ourselves to partnering with all of the physicians that we have that live and work in our community. Mm -hmm. And this is so that we can provide greater access to care for the great people of East Orange, Irvington, um, some parts of Newark and the other oranges. Um, and we also have invested our time in recruiting a number of specialists to help those primary care physicians in our community provide all of the, the care and all the, the needs that their patients have. We've recruited Rutgers uh, radiology team. We also have emergency medicine uh, physicians who are running our ER. And uh, these are some exciting times because now we're starting to put everything in place to make sure that we have the safety net that the wonderful people in this area really need in a healthcare provider. Beautiful, beautiful, and that's good to know. And again, as I told my audience, that uh, I, I, I was recently speaking, I forget the forum, but you need to have a plan and you need to have goals because if you don't have plans and don't have goals you don't know where you're going and you guys have set forth a plan out of a situation that wasn't an ideal situation bankruptcy and you're moving forward mm -hmm. and you're taking the money that's being utilized and putting into good use yes. and it's benefiting our community because if that didn't happen then as I said we'd have to go somewhere else to another community not that you, you isolate yourself from other communities and their services but it's always good when you can come locally and you can take advantage of something that's just as good as somewhere else yeah. now we talked about some services what new services are being offered here at East Orange Center? So we've built two brand new suites. We have the Bariatric and Metabolic Center, and we also have the Women's Health Center. And all of these, they're not just one physician that you go to for one service. All of these are comprehensive centers. So in other locations, when they have Bariatric and Metabolic, they tell you, okay, well, we have the entire team together, but when you start going through the process, you realize that you have to go to a different place to get each uh, specialist along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing with any GYNs that you may visit. You may have to go out for any lab work that needs to be done or you may have to get a prescription for a referral to a different facility so that you can get all of the, the mammograms or any other radiology that you need done. Not here. Mm -hmm. Here at East Orange General, you are in the same spot. Everyone you need on your care team is in that area. Mm -hmm. All of the services that you need, blood is drawn by the bedside, it's extremely convenient because we understand that our community, it's very difficult to take a day off mm -hmm. or have mm -hmm. to navigate multiple locations and multiple providers so that you can get the care that you need. Mm -hmm. So we try to simplify that as much as possible. Okay. You go one place and hopefully, mm -hmm. if time permits, you can get everything done in the same day. Beautiful. Again, that is always a concern of a person taking time off and uh, you know having to get to locations. Again, uh, those of us who are well, I guess we have the advantage sometimes when they work well uh, of getting into a vehicle and just going somewhere, you know, thinks it's easy. But for some people, if you have to take public transportation or get someone to take you, it becomes cumbersome because then, exactly. that, you know, you have to get there. And then in light of it, you have to worry about your job. You can't take off for so many days for your job. Exactly. So that's great. That's a great way to, to in, you know, put everything together. I know our audience uh, hopefully will appreciate that. Now, you may have spoken about uh, some of this, but what investments have been made 
uh, to East Orange General. There have been a number of exciting new investments that Prospect Medical have, has made. Um, we have expanded our women's health. We now offer digital mammography, which is not only more convenient, but it offers a better picture of dense breast tissue. So you're going to get a more accurate reading. Um, we also have upright stereotactic biopsy for added comfort for the patient. And it also is a time saver as well. We've invested in surgical equipment to upgrade our orthopedic, uh, our bariatric, and of course our general surgery. Um, we also have expanded our cardiology. Uh, we are expanding our nuclear medicine and interventional radiology so that we can better diagnose a lot of the cardiology issues that are quite prevalent in our area. Um, and we, as you've seen when you came through, yes. we've done a number of gorgeous remodels. Yes. So yes. prior uh, to Prospect Medical, the hospital was a little dated. We have renovated the lobby, the ER, the inpatient units, uh, outpatient centers, mm -hmm. and we're slowly moving through every part of the uh, hospital to make sure that when you come in, we are presented in a way that meets the expectation of our community. Beautiful, beautiful. And again, I've seen it. It's, it's an excellent facility. Uh, I don't know, it's been a year, so many things may have been in place for a year but it's brand new, spanking new. Uh, and I've spoken to many of you before that uh, my profession is an inspector, so I look at things, and I look at things from a uh, an inspector's eyes, and uh, the place is in excellent con condition. Uh, everything seems brand new, and when you walk in and you're sick, it does make a difference. It just does. It does. If something looks drab, you're like, wow. Him, take care of the place. How are they going to take care of me? Exactly. You're already feeling not at your best. Right. So we have a very warm and welcoming staff as yeah. soon as you walk in to add to yeah. the, the beautiful remodels that we've made. Because at the end of the day, when you're feeling uh, ill or you have concerns about your health or the health of a loved one, yes. you want someone to put your mind at ease. Yes. And that happens the moment you walk in the door with our concierge right at the front. Mm -hmm. And as you move through our hospital, we've also changed our culture. So you're going to get a lot of happy hellos, mm -hmm. smiles, yes. and yes. we're a community hospital. Yes. So yes. when you're here, you're more than just a number. You're one of us. And we want to make sure that you feel that way. Good. That's beautiful, and that's a good thing because, again, uh, and those are the things that sometimes are missing. You know, you feel almost as you're visible uh, when you come in and people are, are greeting you. Sometimes it almost takes you off guard because it's not the norm. Uh, I have a grandson who's now down at Delaware State College, and I relate this story. We were standing in a line at McDonald's and, you know, looking forward to purchase something. All of a sudden, someone said, hello. Didn't really relate. Hello. And it turned around, and the person behind us was saying hello to us, though we had our back to them, because that's the friendly culture that they have. Just because your back is turned, I'm still going to say hello to you, because, you know, we, we are in the same space for a brief Exactly. Minute. And I thought that was so spectacular, because sometimes in this area, and I love this area, I was born in Harlem, raised in Newark, live in Irvington. Uh, it's a hard culture. You say hello to someone, they look at you like, what? And they Ooh. keep moving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's good that the hospital has taken on a culture that hopefully can spread throughout the rest of the community, that we can all speak to each other. You know, we, we, we're only in each other's environment for a brief minute, and if you're ho at the hospital, you're not going to live at the hospital. You're going to be here a brief time. Just let's take and make your day better as opposed to making it why they treated me so bad. Sometimes that's all it takes. Right. Right. Just a, a warm and friendly face. Yes. Um, and I have a number of people that have come in, and the first thing that they say is, wow, everyone's really nice here. That's right. I couldn't That's right. go too far without someone That's saying hello or yes. good morning or how are you. Yeah. And you see it within the interaction between all of the staff, mm -hmm. and we extend that, of course, to the people that we have coming in for care. Beautiful. And again, I came here twice, and I was so, so sick. And I, 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 I I, I just was, you know, taken aback by the complete care because I'm not a person that's used to being sick. So when I'm sick, I'm sick because I'm sick. You know, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I don't want to be here. I'm so sick. you wait until the very end right. when you really should have gone about two weeks ago? Oh, yes, yes, okay. yes. And, 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 and <laughs> I relate to other, the, the most recently, like that seems to be my culture, is that I was out of, out of work. I, I, I had time off uh -huh. uh, the end of the year. So I was off from uh, just before the new year. 
until uh, January 8th. And I plan on just resting, relaxing, nothing, just nothing special. Mm -hmm. But some kind of bug hit me even though I had the flu shot. So I went and did the over-the-counter medicines and everything. Felt a little bit better. I said, okay. Then I felt worse. And I'm still home, not doing anything special. And I took it and I felt a little bit better. And I felt worse. So I finally came back to work on the 8th. Probably shouldn't because I didn't exactly feel 100%. And um, uh, I did make an appointment with the doctor, but it wasn't until that Thursday. But I kept saying, I'm going to troop through this. I'm okay. I'm taking medicine, honey tea, and all this other people, gin ginseng, and all that stuff. <laughs> so finally, I went to the doctor, on uh, my, my primary physician, on Thursday. And he gave me the antibiotics. And it was almost immediate, you know, that I felt the effect and the change that sometimes you have to go to the professional. No, no disrespect to the over-the-counter medicines, but the professional knows when you need to take something a little bit stronger than something over-the-counter. So for a whole week, I probably suffered when I should have, just like what you said, came out the house. Uh -huh. And I said, I'm in the house. I'm not leaving the house. And I suffered because of that. So. But you're right, it is our culture. Yes. We do wait until the last minute. Yes. Um, so one of the other things that we've been sure to do is really get out into the community to spread awareness. Mm -hmm. it's, I've lived here for over 20 years, yeah. and I remember seeing a number of people going to school or work be sick because they, what else are you supposed to do? They don't like going to a hospital, they don't want to wait a long time for a doctor, yeah. so they wait until the very last minute. Yeah. And what I'm very uh, motivated by is mm -hmm. that we have a great pulse on the community, and we go out and we just meet these uh, folks that we, we work with and we take care of mm -hmm. in person, and we find out, what do you need? How can we better serve your needs? Because as a community hospital, the community is mm -hmm. the center of our universe. Yeah. So we have to make sure that there's a constant dialogue, a back and forth, so that we know how we can improve yeah. and where do we go from here. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, take advantage of this uh, fine facility. Uh, that's why I thought it not robbery that we put the show on the air. Uh, though the show is called Irvington now, uh, we are uh, in the same community. There are no borders that really separate us, just location. So take advantage. This hospital is here. At one time there was a hospital in Irvington that's no longer there. But now we have a hospital that is right next door. Take advantage of the improvements uh, that are here. Now we've covered so much. Is there anything else that, we, that you know, you'd like to tell the audience? Well, like I said, I've lived in East Orange for over 20 years. Uh, I remember all of the concerns that we had about this hospital in particular. I remember being skeptical at first, and all of that is why I'm so proud of how far, how far we've come. There are people that'll come in and say, wow, is this the same place? Is this the same hospital? And the short answer is, it's not. Um, we have made a number of improvements and we hope with the support and the feedback of the community that we continue to grow and we continue to be the best at providing the care that you need. Mm -hmm. And what I'm most proud of is we recognize how far we've come, but we're humble enough to know we've got further to go. Mm, that's good. So good. we welcome you. We hope that you'll give us a shot and we look forward to getting the opportunity to gain your trust and become your hospital of choice. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, give them an opportunity. Again, you know, people who know me, I've uh, been that kind of person. If I say something, it's, it's the word is barred, and I, you know, uh, I rely on that, that I continue to say that. I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. You know, sometimes you just don't say anything. So I'm saying it. Uh, give the hospital a try. I've gotten a great opportunity to tour the facility. Even work, even better than that was I got a chance to use the services at the worst place that you want to be is the emergency room. You'd rather come to a preventative care or doctor uh, to get taken care of than end up in the emergency room. And no, no disrespect to the fine workers there, but it's generally the last place you want to come. Yeah. And I know that they both times they treated me so well. Is call a friend, call a neighbor, let them know the Irvington Now show is on so that you can see the second segment and some of the fine things that's going on here.